Hello everyone and welcome back to The Bigger Pixel. I am, as always, your host, The Gaming Mandroid, and I'm guessing from the opening that we just played, you can probably take a wild guess at what kind of build we're doing today. That's right, we are introducing our One Punch Man unarmed build, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Now I do just want to make a quick side note before we get into looking at the stats and the perk list and all that. This build is essentially a role-playing build. I had a lot of fun with this uh, as far as designing it goes, um, but it, to be perfectly honest, it's not a min-maxed build uh, the way that some of our other videos uh, do display min-maxed builds that are that are like super, super effective. And this build is effective, but it's actually going to be pretty hard to play because of some of the role-playing choices that I make here as Saitama. So I'll just catch some people up since I know not everyone is a big dork like me and maybe you haven't seen the anime and all that, but Saitama is the main character of One Punch Man. And uh, we, as you'll see, we're, we're doing some role play here. Um, and the whole the whole kind of joke of it, if you watch the show, is that it's actually basically a comedy show. And, and the whole joke is that he's so powerful that he kills anything he touches that he fights in one punch. And that's actually like his big dilemma because he, he just craves a true fight, but all, even the toughest bad guys, they all just go down in one punch, right? But of course he has his origin story. He was like a regular guy before. In fact, just three years ago, he was a regular guy. And then he got into this fight, and then he trained so hard that he went bald, and now he can kill anything in one punch. So I played off of the whole idea of, of him training, about how he started as an everyday man. And that's kind of the whole running gag in the show, is that even though he's like now super strong, he's still got this like really plain potatoes personality, and he's like uh, this re totally basic kind of boring guy. I wanted to play with that. Um, and so what I did is you'll see on the perk list uh, going by that for 12 levels, I think, in a row, or maybe it's 11, I'm not sure, um, you're taking nothing but stat boosts. Uh, now, you do you do start by take uh, taking some of your basic perks because otherwise you would die and you would not be able to survive in the first couple levels. But as you'll see, starting at level 13, you're just boosting stats, boosting stats. And I just think of this, this is my role play, that this is Saitama training for, for a couple years, getting his his peak physical condition, and then your reward after after very patiently leveling up uh, 12 times or so without getting to take a perk, your reward is now you get to take all the coolest perks on those trees that you have now maxed out. So let's get right into it and take a look at the starting special stats. So we're gonna be starting our strength off with six. This is uh, very useful. Every point of strength gives you plus 10% unarmed or melee damage, so this is great for us. Uh, perception, we're just gonna leave at one. As an unarmed, as, a, as any kind of melee character, you really don't need any perception because you're just gonna be guaranteed 95% chance to hit, so don't worry about perception. Endurance, we're gonna be putting at six. This is gonna give us a pretty good starting amount of health. Uh, Charisma, we're gonna be leaving at two. We're gonna bring that up to three as soon as possible, get that little wanderer going. Intelligence, we're gonna be putting at one, of course, because, and we're gonna leave it at one. No bobbleheads, nothing. Uh, because we're going to be getting Idiot Savant, and we want to use that to level up and get us going real quick. Agility, we're going to put at 6. This is pretty important. This gives us early access to Moving Target and Action Boy, which we are going to be using uh, both of. And Luck, we will put at 7. Uh, 7 is uh, pretty nice because we have just enough access to better criticals and Critical Banker. So those are both really useful. Just a quick disclaimer, this is, as always in all of our build videos, a 22-point build, so that does account for the one extra point that you can uh, acquire by getting the Year Special Book in Sanctuary, so definitely go do that. Go back to your house in Sanctuary. It should be the first thing you do in any playthrough. Get your special and put it into whatever special stat here uh, that is one lacking. Alrighty, so let's just go over the core perks for the One Punch Man build. Now, overall, these, uh, this perk list is kind of similar to our Grognak build. Uh, it's pretty similar to any you know melee-focused build, uh, but I'd say the main difference here is that we're not as focused on the luck tree as we were in that other video. Uh, but let's uh, let's look at the number one perk. Uh, definitely still Idiot Savant is the number one perk. Uh, any, any character that has such low intelligence has literally one intelligence. Uh, really kind of needs the Idiot Savant to uh, make up for it, and especially since we're going to go through our training phase uh, later with this build where we're not going to get to take any perks we really we didn't want that to be painful and take forever because you know you might lose interest at that point if you have to get through 12 levels so we, we wanted you to be able to level up kind of fast so definitely take idiot savant immediately at level 2 and immediately at a level 11 and immediately at level 34 uh, 
to maximize the benefit of Idiot Savant, you should always take it the moment it's available to you, if you're planning on taking it. After that, definitely Iron Fist is going to be our number one perk. Of course, we have to get our uh, our one punch skills on, deal a lot of damage, and uh, the Iron Fist uh, skill is uh, pretty interesting. It's pretty good, uh, better than I thought actually before I tried this. It does similar to the Big Leagues perk, uh, offer you a chance to disarm your opponents. Uh, unfortunately, that chance, at least according to the descriptions of the perk, does not increase with the next rank the way it does with Big Leagues. You'll see under Big Leagues it says you now have a greater chance to disarm your opponent. Instead, the unarmed uh, gets a chance to cripple an opponent's limb, but important caveat, with a power attack. Okay, none, nothing else on any of the other weapon skills mentions specifically that you have to power attack. So that's just something I think you should definitely keep in mind as you move forward with this build if you're playing it. Um, don't forget about your power attacks. Use them. You can't use them inside of VATS. Uh, so you have to be outside of the vats at least some of the time. And I did I did notice that as I played with this build and play tested it, we I was kind of half and half. Used vats sometimes and stayed outside of vats other times. Uh, unlike my Grognak build that was very luck focused, so I was pretty much constantly in vats. This is a little bit different. If you want to get the full use out of your Iron Fist perk, you got to drop out of vats every once in a while. All right, next I'll say the uh, Bloody Mess perk. Uh, this is kind of for roleplay reasons, but again, I, it, I just had to put it on there and, and kind of prioritize it, take it kind of early. If you Again, if you've seen the anime and you've seen Saitama, he just punches somebody in the stomach and, you know, just guts fly out the other end and they just explode, like, literally. So Bloody Mess just had to be included here. Uh, my only complaint, uh, uh, okay, just to talk about this perk overall, it's not the greatest perk in the world. I mean, ultimately you can get uh, plus 15% total f damage, uh, which is nice, but, uh, you know, nothing to write home about, honestly, because Lone Wanderer can offer you more, but you get the extra damage, and of course it's fun to see things explode. The only thing that really disappoints me about this perk is that it just does not proc often enough. Uh, I'm not sure if we could get a single capture. We wanted so bad to get a, a moment of just people just exploding uh, from bloody mess, and I don't think we got a single capture of it popping off, uh, which is really disappointing because, you know, we played for several hours, so... That's my chief complaint, but of course you get the damage bonus, so the perk's not worthless, uh, and, and it's perfect for role-playing Saitama, so that's why it's on here, and it, is, and it is fun. When it does go off, it's fun. All right, next up on the core perks is Blitz, the perk. This is the a level nine agility perk, and we won't be able to take it until level 26, unfortunately. This is one of those perks that you're gonna have to earn, okay? And that is an intentional part of this build, is, is that you, we, we didn't focus on one tree, and we wanna maximize uh, at least four of our stats, strength, endurance, agility, and luck. We're gonna maximize all of those, and so, you have to earn it. I know it's probably really tempting to just take it the moment you get uh, to level 22 uh, or to prioritize agility before that and take it around level uh, 19 or so. Uh, I know it's tempting, but just to roleplay Saitama, you know, you really gotta, you gotta earn it, you know, you gotta earn your wings, you gotta, you gotta train like, uh, like there's no tomorrow. I, I wish I could remember exactly what his, he said his training regimen was. It was so funny. But uh, you, you gotta earn it. But Blitz is magical. Uh, if you haven't seen Blitz in action, uh, there's some good footage of it here. There's some great footage of it on our Grognak video. Blitz is ridiculous. Uh, it lets you do so much nonsense in VATS, just teleporting around the battlefield. It's absolutely essential for any melee character. Um, so Saitama needs Blitz. After that, I'll just say uh, better criticals definitely as his uh, final core perk. Like I said, uh, this build kind of is it's kind of half and half. I definitely do use vats in it, uh, but I also play outside of vats. So when you're inside vats, you definitely want to be building up, uh, building up all your crits. That's why we're going to take critical banker, and that's why we're going to take better criticals. Um, and this is pretty essential to actually getting stuff to die in one punch is to open up vats and use one of your crits. Um, we, we do our best, but. Playing on even just hard versus very hard, uh, there are definitely going to be enemies that you can't kill in one punch. So, you know, without cheating, one punch man is often going to require more than one punch. But we do everything we can to, uh, to as part of the roleplay, to really just take stuff down in one hit. 
Okay, so let's talk about collectibles real quick. Now, honestly, I don't want to spend too long uh, going over all of this uh, just because it's going to take forever and it's uh, kind of been talked about in some of our other videos as well. But uh, you do want the Grognock magazines. Those are going to help you deal more critical damage. That does apply to both melee weapons and unarmed criticals. 5% for each magazine. I'm just going to read off a couple of locations where you can find uh, it's really the easiest locations where you can find them. Of course, you've got one in Sanctuary. You've got one just south of there at the Wicked Shipping Fleet Lockup. You've got one uh, even further south, uh, Vault 81, after you do a couple quests. You've got one in the Corvega assembly plant, which you're very likely to come across if you do uh, an early Minuteman quest, which I do recommend you do. And you've got one in the Boston Common near Swan, but you don't have to fight Swan. It's uh, practically undefended, so pick up some of those magazines. You're also going to want essentially every bobblehead uh, for this main special stats other than the intelligence bobblehead. You don't want the intelligence bobblehead because that's going to interfere with your idiot savant. You might as well just have one intelligence rather than two and just get idiot savant to trigger at the maximum number of times. So uh, I would prioritize them in uh, this order. Well, technically charisma bobblehead is the most important because you want lone wanderer really early. Uh, there is a level requirement on that quest though. Stay tuned, there should be a link. We've got a full length video coming out on the Charisma Bobblehead because it's kind of a lengthy process to get it. So stay tuned, hopefully there's a link popping up now. Otherwise, it'll be coming out soon, probably later this week. But after you get the Charisma Bobblehead um, from the Secret of Cabot House quest line, you're gonna want the Strength Bobblehead from the Mass Fusion building. You're gonna want the Endurance Bobblehead from Poseidon Energy. You're gonna want the Luck Bobblehead from Spectacle Island. And you're gonna want the Agility Bobblehead from the Wreck of the FMS Northern Star. Lastly, you are definitely going to want the unarmed bobblehead, which offers you plus 25% unarmed critical damage uh, from the Adam Katz Garage. Uh, now, there are no enemies at the Adam Katz Garage, so it is kind of an easy pickup, but it is also far to the south of the map, so um, you're probably going to need to be a little bit of a higher level to uh, brave that voyage. Okay, so let me just take a quick second to talk about equipment for our Saitama One Punch Man build. Now, as you can see, we have clearly downloaded some mods to get our costume into the mix here. Uh, it is a mod of the, uh, it's a reskin of the Vault 111 uh, jumpsuit that is the main costume plus Maxon's cape. Uh, I understand you might not have access to these if you're playing on the console. I wouldn't worry about it too much because these items actually do not offer good damage resistance at all. However, if you are on PC and you want the look down the way we've got the look down, then go ahead and uh, check the description below. We'll definitely put some links on there to the mods that we used. However, like I said, these items uh, do not actually offer a good amount of damage resistance. For the purpose of the video, for the sake of it, just because we wanted the costume and we wanted to look like Saitama, we actually basically cheated in our uh, damage resistance. We didn't do an unreasonable amount though. We did a pretty reasonable amount. I think we had about 200 damage resistance at level 51. That's totally viable. You can do that. You can get that a couple of ways. Maybe you want to use ballistic weaves on something um, that looks good for you uh, if you want to do that. I would also recommend uh, Grognak's costume. Um, it does give you plus two strength. Unfortunately, it's plus 20% melee damage does not affect the unarmed as far as I know. I'm pretty sure it only affects actual melee weapons, uh, but it is still a good choice for you. Uh, plus two strength is nothing to sneeze at. However, you might want to balance that out because it, it also takes up your chest piece and also has um, not the best damage resistance. So basically I'm leaving it up to you guys uh, what kind of equipment you want to wear. You're going to need a decent amount of damage resistance however you want to go about getting it. Um, maybe metal armor has the highest uh, ballistic damage resistance and maybe you want to do that. You probably won't end up looking like Saitama like we do but Again, we're role-playing here, so that's why we went ahead and uh, downloaded those mods and got the costume going. Now, as far as weapons go, um, there's only four unarmed weapons. There's the knuckles, the boxing gloves, the deathclaw gauntlet, and the power fist. Now, I don't think that the boxing gloves are really worth your time. Um, so early game, I'd recommend you just use knuckles. They're really easy to find. They'll start spawning even from level one. So you can find those pretty easily and upgrade them at least a little bit. Uh, later game, your two choices are definitely, if you're being practical and you want a good amount of damage, your two main choices are either the Deathclaw Gauntlet or the Power Fist. Um, I would 
personally recommend the Deathclaw Gauntlet. It takes a lot less AP to use, uh, and that's always great because we do have some luck perks and we do like our criticals, and we do use VATs a, a decent amount. So anything that uses less AP lets us get to our criticals faster, and that is useful. So I would probably recommend that. But the uh, Ballistic, I'm sorry, the Power Fist does have a higher base damage, uh, a, a considerably higher base damage once it's fully upgraded. So if you really want to get things to die in one punch, I do recommend uh, the Power Fist. And on that same note of getting things to die in one hit, a good way to do it is to farm for the Instigator Legendary Effect on either the Deathclaw Gauntlet or the Power Fist. And what the Instigator does is, as long as your opponent is at full health, your attack will do double damage. It will do uh, twice as much damage. So that's uh, definitely the ticket to getting things to drop in one punch. Um, still, you're gonna find enemies that do not die in one punch. That's uh, the bottom line, especially if you're playing on higher difficulties. Probably, maybe if you played on normal, uh, you might be able to get through pretty much the whole late game and just knock stuff out in one hit, but we, we don't play on normal, so you'll see plenty of instances in the footage here where things do take more than one punch, but oh well, we don't want to cheat it. We don't want to make the game too easy. You know, if, if everything died in one punch, the game would probably get boring anyways, so it is what it is. Now, if you're having difficulty finding uh, one of these higher uh, level weapons, either the Deathclaw Gauntlet or the Power Fist, there is a pretty darn good Power Fist that you can get that's guaranteed to drop uh, even at lower levels. Uh, from Swan. Swan is the unique uh, super mutant behemoth that can be found at Swan's Pond, which is basically part of the Boston Commons area uh, right there at the start of the Freedom Trail. So uh, definitely uh, that might be one of your earliest priorities if you want that um, to take down Swan and get the Power Fist there. And the effect on it is that for every consecutive hit uh, on the same enemy, it will deal additional damage. So this is a great effect. Uh, this is a great weapon. Um, it's kind of the opposite of the idea of our One Punch Man build, though, because, uh, you know, you're going to have to punch him a couple times to start getting the effect to trigger um, and, and start doing a lot of extra damage. So let's wrap things up here. Uh, you might notice that we kind of skipped the early priorities phase of this uh, build. Um, the early priorities are quite simply gathering those magazines and gathering those bobbleheads and maxing out your uh, strength, endurance, agility, and luck. By the by, the end you should have ten for all of those, and uh, you'll see in the perks we've we've done it so that you you train yourself up to nine, and of course you want the bobbleheads. So I'd say up until level twenty three, your priority should be acquiring all of those bobbleheads and whatnot, and just maximizing your stats. And that's when you finally get the right to shave your head and become the true one punch man. Put on that costume. You're no longer the everyday man. Alrighty, so let's just get into pros and cons. Pros, uh, this is a lot of fun, especially if you're if you're into the anime, if you know the character, this is a lot of fun. Uh, you do get uh, to take a lot of the best perks on all of these trees. That's kind of the whole concept of the build, is that you, you train up, you get to the max, and then you just take only the good stuff, because we're, we're losing about 11 or 12 perks just from training our stats. So we, we prioritize and we take all the best stuff, so Blitz and Rooted and Better Criticals and Critical Banker and a Lone Wanderer, just all the best stuff for a melee character. So uh, that's a lot of fun. Cons, I would say, uh, again, uh, as you'll see, find common with some of our builds, we do not prioritize the lock picking, the hacking. I don't see how it's necessary. Um, I don't think you need power armor for this build either, by the way, but if you wanted power armor, there's no science, there's no intelligence for it, uh, and getting the intelligence for it would take a really long time and be totally counterproductive to your idiot savant anyways. So cons are essentially that, um, A, you're going to have a, a pretty tough uh, early to mid game. Um, it, it is hard uh, to, to not take perks for 11 levels in a row. Uh, that does increase the difficulty of playing this build. But it's pretty rewarding, I think. Uh, pretty rewarding uh, to, to get to level 24 and take Lone Wanderer and just start feeling like a boss. Just feeling like you really earned it. So B is that uh, you don't have access to uh, opening doors and whatnot, and uh, since you're taking Lone Wanderer, getting the companions to do those things for you is also a bit of a hassle and a little bit counterproductive, so that's rough. You also have low charisma, uh, so that makes it hard to make money. Uh, it's still 
it shouldn't be too hard for you actually uh, with this build because you're not using any kinds of guns whatsoever and ammo can basically act as caps. Um, so you can sell all the ammo that you pick up that weighs nothing and kind of help make up for this. And of course you can always boost um, your charisma by wearing certain clothes, by taking the great mentats. I always recommend you do that, but it is, it is kind of annoying to have to uh, work around having a terrible charisma and uh, just not having good buying power. Uh, the flip side of that is that luckily you don't need too much for this build. Uh, it's pretty easy to find these uh, unarmed weapons. There aren't even that many of them and you can get them at a relatively low level and ultimately your loadout, the, the inherent weight of your particular loadout is going to be pretty low because you only need like one weapon. All the unarmed weapons weigh virtually nothing. You're not going to be carrying around those 20 pound guns uh, in some of the gun nut builds you know, and stuff like that. So you're going to have plenty of space to carry and whatnot. Okay, so that just about wraps it up for our Saitama One Punch Man, One Punch build. Um, it is a lot of fun. I, I certainly enjoyed creating it, um, and, I, and I hope you guys will enjoy it too, especially if you're a fan of the anime. So please, if you did enjoy this video, if you like uh, Fallout 4, if you like uh, One Punch Man, <laughs> then uh, do uh, leave a like, leave a comment, consider sharing it, and consider subscribing here to The Bigger Pixel, where we're going to be bringing you more content. We're going to have another build next week. We're going to have more videos releasing this week and next week, of course. As well, we are planning uh, a couple new series um, on console commands, on uh, just examining all of the perks in the, that are available on the various trees. So we've got a lot more stuff planned and coming. So thank you for your time, thank you for watching. I'm glad you made it to the end here. I am, as always, your host, The Gaming Android, and I will see you next week.